This is the demo to create both the tracer or template that you're going to need um, to determine what shape you want to do for your coil vessel. So in order to get the actual vessel shape, we have to stack the coils to create this uh, silhouette. And so the easiest way to do that is to create a paper tracer that we can use to place your coils so that we're making sure that it is uniform all the way around and that it is even. So to do that, we're gonna create a paper tracer, paper template first with the silhouette of your pop, all right? So what we're gonna do is, this is an eight inch piece of paper. Um, it's best to use like a thin cardboard, like a cereal box, or if you have an old um, piece of junk mail, like the cardboard, the mailers, like the postcard mailers, um, that's large enough, that works really well too. I'm gonna start by, on the left-hand side, I'm gonna kind of draw an inch long, inch wide stripe down the side. So this, you're not gonna draw any of your line in this area. And we do that because as I'm drawing the silhouette of the pot, if I approach too close to the edge of the piece of paper, the that means that the that area of my pot will be too narrow and it'll basically close itself off because you're using a coil that has a pretty decent thickness. Um, and so if we get too close here, you're gonna run out of room. All right, so that's just to, pre to prevent you from doing that by accident, okay? So I've drawn this stripe where I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna draw in here at all. Now I'm gonna draw the silhouette of one side of my pot. All right, so as you can see here, this is half of the pot. If I flip it this way, you can see the full silhouette of the pot the whole thing, okay? So you're drawing one half. Th I think this works best as trial and error, to be honest. Some of the best um, designs we've come up with have just been kind of draw a crazy line and then see what you get. So I start by marking here at the top. So this is gonna be the width of the opening of my pot. And I just do this so that I don't, if you want a really wide um, opening on your pot, something like, um, you know, this, okay, I'm marking where, how wide the opening is going to be, the lip's going to be, and then I'm marking where, how wide the bottom is going to be. So in this case, they're basically, one is right directly over top of the other on my tracer, and then, but for this one, I have a much narrower lip or opening than I do a base. So I just like to mark those first so that I kind of know um, where, kind of where to stay within. So I'm going to do a wider opening on this one since I did a narrow on this one, and we're going to do a narrower bottom. All right, the other thing you want to do is this is going to be basically just a line, okay, that has um, ins and outs, basically. So you want to make sure that you're going in and out or changing direction at least twice, and that's gonna give you an interesting shape to vessel. Um, so that would, an example would be, you're gonna go in and then back out, in, in this case, back in again, and back out. So you just wanna change directions. Think of them as kind of corners. So then also you can consider a foot, which would be this portion here, kind of a pedestal that the pot sits on, or you can do, you can not do a foot, and have the bottom of your pot come all the way to the table, which is totally fine. So we just sit on the table here. When you're drawing this tracer out though, the lip has to be all the way at the top of the tracer and the foot touches all the way at the bottom so that your whole pot is eight inches. 
okay? Don't do any um, handles or any decorative details or anything at this point, all right? I'm gonna bring this guy in just a little bit because I feel like that's a little too wide, so I'm not gonna do that. All right, so then the next step is gonna be to cut along the line that you just drew. And we're gonna save both pieces because we're gonna use them both. So I'm gonna cut along here. Okay, so to clarify, this is the pot. This is not the pot. If you're a lefty and you do this reverse, like on the other side, you just reverse them. Okay, so wherever you put your no draw zone, this is the pot. Not the pot. Okay. So I'm going to take the pot for this next step and place it on a piece of paper. And I'm going to trace... the outline, so the top and the bottom. I'm not gonna do, you can do this straight edge here if you want, but it's not necessary. And then I'm gonna flip it over and see how mine was, if I trace the entire stencil, it's gonna be like really wide. So I just scooted mine in a little bit cause I'm not gonna do, I don't want it to be quite that wide, but I can see that it doesn't cut, doesn't touch there. So I'm okay. Trace the other side. All right, and then that gives you the silhouette of your pot. And then at this point, I would add, if I wanted to do handles of any sort, or um, if you wanted to add, I'll show you how to add decorative lips and feet by just not blending in the coil. So you can have, um, kind of a nice round top to something. So you leave this coil not blended, or maybe you want one at the bottom so it looks a little bit raised. So you can add any little details that you think it needs. Remember, we're gonna do either bubble glazing or marbling or the layered underglaze um, and sand away. So you're gonna have kind of a, a non-traditional glaze element in this. So it might be nice if you have an area of the pot in mind that you want to do that fancy glazing that you kind of create kind of a barrier for that. So maybe I leave a coil unblended here so I get kind of like a border and then I can stop here and have a nice corner. And so then I can put my, let's say bubble glazing here. And then I want to have an opportunity to do regular glaze in other areas. So you don't have to do the non-traditional glaze everywhere. You can add areas of regular glaze. So I'm gonna do those there. You can also, I showed you an example, um, you can slightly alter this top lip if you want to do a picture that would be an option. I know people like functional things, so that would make it optional. All right, and then, so this is the pot. The remainder of your paper, not the pot side, you're gonna save, and this is what we're gonna use while we build. So as you're placing your coils and building each day, you're going to hold this up along your project, all right? And it's going to guide the placement of your coils so that ultimately your coil pot will fit perfectly inside of this tracer at the end. That is how we know that we're successful. So we use this actually to measure um, the, the uniform shape of the pot the entire time. So we can kind of turn the pot and hold this up and make sure that we're even all the way around. That prevents you from ending up with a lopsided pot. 
All right, so you need to keep both pieces. What you're going to submit in Schoology today is this is step one, or part one, and this part is step two. So you're going to submit both of those into Schoology. You can do one picture and add them both in, just like that. All right, see you tomorrow.